My voice, now what? I banged through several songs and just didn't find one I felt good with today. So I figured I'd go with the reading that I was going to hold on to for a little while. But this is this is a reading. This is from a book that I've been reading recently. It's another Harry uh, Dresden book, so go with it. But I think the point of this passage is good. So this is after Harry has seen something so horrible in its aspect that it is almost debilitating to think about it. So this is him trying to deal with that. And he had just arrived at a friend's house. He picked me up the way you carry a child, barely grunting as he did. He carried me down the hall and into a dark bedroom. He laid me down on a bed, then crossed to the window and pulled and locked a heavy steel security curtain over it. Evidently another customization that he and Georgia had installed. What do you need, Harry? Billy asked. Dark. Quiet. Explain it later. Put a hand on my shoulder and said, Right. Then padded out of the room and shut the door. It left me in the dark with my thoughts, which is where I needed to be. Come on, Harry, I muttered to myself. Get used to the idea. And I thought about the thing I'd seen. It hurt. But when I came back to myself, I did it again. And again. And again. Yes, I'd seen something horrible. Yes, it was a hideous terror. But I'd seen other things, too. I called up those memories, too, all of them, just as sharp and fresh as the horror pressing upon me. I'd seen good people screaming in madness under the influence of black magic. I'd seen the true selves of men and women, good and bad. Seen people kill and die. I'd seen the queens of fairy as they prepared for battle, drawing all their awful power around them. And I'd be damned if I was going to roll over for one more horrible thing, doing nothing but jumping from one rooftop to another. Come on, punk, I snarled at the memory. Next to those others, you're a bad yearbook picture. And I hit myself with it, again and again, filling my mind with every horrible and beautiful thing I had ever seen. And as I did, I focused on what I had bloody well done about it. I remembered the things I'd battled and destroyed. I remembered the strongholds of nightmares and terrors that I had invaded. The dark gates I'd kicked down. I remembered the faces of prisoners I'd freed. And the funerals of those I'd been too late to save. I remembered the sounds of voices and laughter. The joy of loved ones reunited. The tears of the lost and bereaved. There are bad things in the world. There's no getting away from that. But that doesn't mean nothing can be done about them. You can't abandon life just because it's scary and just because sometimes you get hurt. Memory of the thing hurt like hell. The pain wasn't anything special or new. I've lived with it before and would do it again. It wasn't the first thing I'd seen, and it wouldn't be the last. I was not going to roll over and die. Sledgehammers of perfect memory pounded me down into blackness. When I pulled myself back together, I was sitting on the bed, my legs folded Indian style, my palms resting on my knees. My breathing was slow and rhythmically heavy. My back was straight. My head pounded painfully, but not cripplingly so. I thought of my pursuer again, and the image made me shudder, but that was all. I kept breathing slowly and steadily. That was the upside to being human. On the whole, we're an adaptable sort of being. Certainly, I'd never been a, be able to get rid of the memory of this awful thing or any of the aw other awful things I'd seen. So, if the memory couldn't change, it would have to be me. 
I could get used to seeing that kind of horror, enough to see it and yet remain a reasoning being. Better men had done so. Morgan had. I shivered again, not because of any memory. It was because I knew what it could mean. When you forced yourself to live with hideous things like that, it changed you. Maybe not all at once. Maybe it didn't turn you into a monster. But I'd been scarred, and I knew it. How many times would something like this need to happen before I started bending myself into something horrible just to survive? I was young for a wizard. Where would I be after decades or centuries of refusing to look away? Now, obviously, this is an extreme example of things, but I think it's analogous to some things that people go through today. We see horrible things, and we either bend ourselves to cope with it, or we don't, and we break. And, and I think his statement at the end about how much do we bend ourselves to deal with that? How far can we go with that before we become something terrible, too? Kind of a scary thought. So, my voice, now what?